Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can determine quantiles using Python. Quantiles are a generic term for things like quartiles, quintiles, deciles, percentiles, etc. And basically they split the data into k segments. And if you make that k, for example, 4, you split it into four different segments, creating the so-called quartiles. Um, that would mean that if you have a first quartile, that 25% of the data should be less or equal to that first quartile, and 75% should therefore be higher or equal. Um, I have a separate video where I do this by using my own library, stickpadp, which has a function that can even deal with non-numerical data. Um, and uh, it has over and it has actually 20 different methods to do this. Uh, but in this video, I will simply use pandas uh, or numpy. Uh, to show you how that can be done, um, I need some example data for which I'll actually use pandas already, which has a read CSV uh, function which can load my, um, well, not mine, it's actually from the general social survey from 2012. I adjusted it slightly for some examples. Um, and if I read all of that in as a data frame, I get quite a lot of data because I get all of it and I actually only need one uh, field as an example. So I'm going to be using the account sci, which is short for accounting scientific, which is uh, the responses on how scientific accounting is according to those respondents. So I'll store that under ord field as an ordinal field and to get a quick impression that counts. Uh, as you can see, it ranged from very specific to uh, not scientific at all. These are not in the correct order yet, but we'll deal with that later. Uh, you can see which options there are without a frequency table by just using unique. And then you see all the different options. And it might be useful to actually have the different options as a dictionary uh, in the proper order. So from not scientific at all to very scientific, and each was assigned a numeric value. All right, now... I have seen two other libraries that can be of interest here. The pandas library itself has actually a function uh, quantile. Uh, it only works with a numerical data. So let's first do that by using the replace. So I'm going to replace all the values with the coding and store that under ordinal field numeric. Um, and also make sure it's numeric by using the to numeric um, command which gives us now that same table but now instead of the labels we actually have numbers specifying this is the first category this is the second the third and the fourth and then we can use the quantile function um, you can simply then specify as a list of which quantiles you want so i want a 25 percent and 75 percent and that simply gives you then um, the uh, the value for those. So this would be the first category and then I have to look up in my coding, my dictionary basically, uh, which label actually belong to that. Um, Pandas actually uses the Excel method for uh, indexing uh, and then you can choose if you want to round up the index, round it down, uh, use normal roundings, um, use an interpolation if it's not an integer. Uh, which is actually the default, or use the midpoint, which is halfway between the the index uh, and the next uh, index. Um, and you can change that by simply setting the interpolation uh, method uh, parameter, and then you get, well, in this case, the same result, but you can change it. And in some cases, especially if the data uh, is relatively small, then it might actually have an impact. Um, that's only a few options, actually, that uh, Pandas therefore offer. Uh, NumPy has slightly more. It has a function called percentile, which works very similar to the quantile function. Uh, so let's first load that one in. And then I can use that function. Uh, I have to remove missing values. And then actually I can specify again which ones I want to see. Uh, NumPy, as mentioned, has a few uh, additional options. So all of these are available by setting uh, the method that you want to use. And these last four are actually the same as in um, uh, Pandas. Uh, so you can just say method equals this one. And that's about it. Now, even though this is quite a lot of different methods, there are even more methods. Uh, I'll explain that in the details, but that's a separate video by itself. 
Right, I hope this was helpful um, and uh, thank you for watching.